Let's make this quick. It's the bell, and also the fire hydrant, and the little spaceship with its awful little noise. Oh yeah, and they're out of shield and forward air combos and the key and the trampoline and... Uh, okay, maybe we gotta spend a bit more time on this. Ultimate's new engine and system was kind of a payback machine for Smash 4. The meta oppressors like Bayo, Corrin, and Cloud lost their crowns. Meanwhile, the meta oppressed, like Rob and Palutena, rose up to seize the means of tier list production. And in the process, many of these characters went from beloved low-tier revolutionaries to loathed high-tier meta dictators, perpetuating a hierarchy all too similar to the one they destroyed. What are we talking about again? Pac-Man? Right. Ultimate made Pac-Man a much better character across the board, bringing him into prominence. In a lot of ways, prominence alone is enough to be hated. Viewers don't like to see similar outcomes over and over, and competitors don't like to feel as if they have to overcome a certain character to win. But if you're having certain trouble over certain matchups, or looking to improve in general, head on over to ProGuides.com. You'll find tons of hands-on courses from top players like Zero, Esam, DeBuzz, and more. There's tons of character-specific guides and videos, and even more content than that. Go check it out once you're done with this video. We can see hate for pretty much every prominent character in Ultimate, and most non-prominent ones too. Everyone hates everyone in Ultimate, and it's hilarious. But the hate isn't evenly distributed. Palutena gets a lot more hate than Fox, Joker gets a lot more hate than Lucina, and Pac-Man gets quite a bit of hate for his relative presence and ranking in the meta. There are a lot of reasons, but the most obvious is his archetype. The Zoner. If a revolution against annoying characters were to come, the Zoner class may be the first to go to the guillotine. Their charge will be stealing stage control through dishonest and unfair means and not letting me hit them! Zoners get a really bad rap in most fighting games because they don't feel terribly interactive. When you lose to a Zoner, it often doesn't feel like you lost to the character as much as their projectile. You can see this in how complaints about zoners often go straight to their projectiles. A common anger and loss reaction is to deflect in order to justify. So basically, instead of saying, Wow, Snake tricked me into several 50-50s, read my options, and kept me from touching him, the Salty Smasher may say, Wow, Snake's grenade is frame one and that's brain dead good. It's super easy to deflect when losing to zoners, and that makes players less inclined to respect them and more inclined to hate them. This effect applies to Pac-Man and his bonus fruit. Pac-Man's bell is notorious for this. Once most opponents get above 90% or so, it's very dangerous to get off the ledge against Pac-Man. This is because Pac-Man can react to or set up against most ledge options with his bell, and if his opponent makes the wrong move, he gets a kill. For as tough as Bell is to deal with, it's really not that different from Krom's Jab or Fox's Neutral Air. In the right hand, Pac-Man Bell, Fox Snare, and Krom Jab are all top-tier ledge trapping options that can cover lots of options and lead to kills. But when a player gets hit by a Krom Jab and sees him do that nice, raw back air, a lot of players are inclined to give more credit and respect. And then the salty player feels like Krom did that work when the bell did all the work for Pac-Man. When you take your salt goggles off, it's very obvious Pac-Man did his own work for the kill as much as Krom did. When you put your thinking cap on, it's also obvious that the Pac-Man and Krom player are both just abusing fast kill confirms with reliable setups. The same effect occurs when Pac-Man smacks his opponents in the face with his car keys. What's happening here is Pac-Man is using a raw, fast kill move with a lot of strength to get a surprise kill. Melee rushdown characters do this all the time, whether it's with Fox and Mario's up smash or Krom's forward smash. But when Pac-Man does it, it feels more infuriating because, once again, it's easier to blame the key and deflect the loss. If a player rolls into a Krom forward smash, they'll feel much more like they deserved it than if they ran up, dropped shield too close to Pac-Man, and got hit by the key. This leads to the second part of what makes Pac-Man and a lot of zoners so hated. Perceived unfairness. I don't get ranged options, why do they get them? I have to run off stage and aerial to edgeguard while Snake can just press side B? In reality, rushdown and melee characters often get compensated for their lack of range. Rushdown characters have the advantage of speed, great melee hitboxes, solid kill confirms, and plenty more. Played well, a good rushdown or non-projectile character can break most zones. This isn't an opinion, it's a fact. MK Leo's Joker has broken pretty much every zone you could set up in Ultimate. So has Wario in the hands of Gluttony, Tweak, or Kamehameha, and so has ZSS in the hands of Mars. In Ultimate, the Zoner vs. Zone Breaker matchup is super common and pretty even. 
you'll see DeBuzz smoke a player with Olimar in one set and get smoked in another. But when DeBuzz smokes someone with Olimar, there's more of a sense of unfairness because the range difference between the two characters is more obvious than the other differences. People are much quicker to ask, how come Olimar gets to run away and throw Pikmin than how come Fox did 50% by standing on the ledge and nairing? It's easy to see how Pac-Man's different range options can be advantageous or frustrating. It's harder to see how Joker's huge and fast aerials make him an even more privileged member of the option wealthy tier that controls the means of meta production. It's also hard to see what Pac-Man is doing, period. The character is just hard to understand, which makes him more annoying to play against and watch. When watching T, it can be hard to understand all the skill that goes into his game. Same goes for MVD and prominent snake players. When Nairo goes way off stage to edgeguard, it's obviously skillful because it requires quick movement and thinking. When T dominates the stage with Hydrant, it's harder to see the skill behind that. It's harder to understand that T can use the Hydrant so well because he knows the exact HP, the angles it launches, the timing of the water, and so much more. It's absolutely true that some characters are easier than others or require different skill sets. But there's a strong scrub tendency to assume zoners make the game easy, and a large part of that misconception comes from misunderstanding. Misunderstanding Pac-Man makes him a ton more frustrating to fight, too. Whenever you fight any character, you're being tested on matchup knowledge. But when you fight Pac-Man, it feels like that test is written in a terrible eldritch script that gradually drives the mind to madness. Pac-Man has a lot of unique elements to his kit that will change the way you have to face him. If you try to approach in the normal way, you may get a bell to the face. If you try and punish his landing like you would most characters, you'll eat an entire fire hydrant. When Smash players without matchup knowledge fight Pac-Man, the entire fight both looks and feels unfair. It looks and feels like Pac-Man can reuse and hold onto his items for way too long. It feels like Pac-Man can recover and land way too easily. It feels like not only is his defense super strong, but his combo game is great too. Pac-Man does have all those strengths, but so do a lot of characters. With an understanding of the character, Pac-Man's strengths don't disappear, but his weaknesses become clearer. He lacks good melee hitboxes, his opponents can see what fruit he has and adapt to it, and his hydrant opens up room for reversals. Realizing the character's weaknesses tends to make people respect the character more and hate them less. In Pac-Man's case, the weaknesses can be hard to see. Does that mean all of Pac-Man's hate comes from being a weird zoner character that confuses everyone to death? If we all just learned about Pac-Man and respected zoners, would we even have a reason to hate Pac-Man? Probably. The truth is, there's reason to hate every character in Ultimate, and there are simple, straightforward reasons to just not like Pac-Man. The character has great defensive options on the board. He totally changes how the game has to play out and can slow the game to a crawl because sometimes the best strategy is to camp out his items. You do get some really cool plays out of Pac-Man, but at the competitive level, those plays can take two full minutes to develop. He doesn't have a lot of variance in combos and kill confirms, so you're gonna see a lot of the bell, the key, and the hydrant. Lots of viewers and players prefer quick, back-and-forth stocks, and Pac-Man ain't great for that. Much of the Pac-Man rage comes from common preference for high-octane games, but some of it comes from the deeply held rage against the zoner class. And some of it comes from the deeply held rage against the unknown Eldritch script which governs Pac-Man's playstyle and drives the weak mind of mankind off the sharp cliff face of sanity. Are those bad reasons to hate Pac-Man? Should you not hate Pac-Man? We don't know. We're not some kind of large centralized socio-political apparatus that adjudicates Smash ideology, silly. But truthfully, this ancient deity of dimes and quarters holds less power over you than that teenager from that anime game you like. And the more you understand the arcade king in yellow, the more reason you have to respect and less reason you have to fear facing him.
And now armed with a little more knowledge on your side, you have all the more reason to subscribe to our channel. Right now, go check out that button. And after you make sure you're subscribed, don't be afraid to touch the bell. It won't freeze you like Pac-Man's. You promise.